What's up my bro, Tundrum here, back with another video, and today I'm going to be showing you my turn 3 Bent Infinite Mana Combo and Standard Deck Tech. Now this deck, it's pretty much, the deck's goal is to infinite off. It can do it on turn 3 a lot of the time, it is kind of hard to do it on turn 3, there is multiple different combos, but in most cases it's normally a turn 4 to 5 combo. And just a quick disclaimer before I get into it, I have done a bit of testing with this deck, it is great and hilarious when you get a combo off, it's just absolute rubbish, it's just so good, but I will tell you it's probably not going to be top tier as it only really manages to combo 30-40% to 40 of the time and some decks have so much interaction it can't really beat it. So without further ado, let's get into what the combo is. So, pretty much the goal of the combo is to generate infinite mana. So how we do this is we have a card like Incubation Druid, Paradise Druid, or Feyburrow Elder. Your pretty much goal is to get them to tap for more than free mana, or be able to get Gauntlets of Light's ability cheaper, which you then equip to it. So then you can just activate the Gauntlets of Light's bottom ability, which you'll have on the creature, to infinitely untap and tap it. And then you spend that infinite mana into a card like Kinnon or Leyline of Abundance. So pretty much you've got um, you've got your Incubation, Paradise, Druid, or Fae Burrow Elder. You want it to be tapping for more than free mana or cost less. You, we do this with things like Fae Burrow Elder having multiple colours, um, Leyline of Abundance giving them more extra mana, Kinnon giving them more mana, and Biomance is familiar, making them cost less. Um, incubation Druid can also tap for free later in game if we have the mana to invest into it. So it's not too hard to do. Then we equip the Gauntlets of Light onto it and pay free and tap it for the mana, untap it floating one, infinitely loop, and then spend the infinite mana to just insta win with Kinnon and, or like, and Slash or Leyline. We also run cards like Incubation um, to do this, help us search for combos. Um, yeah, just more utility cards to help us sift through and get our combos earlier. Cards like a Boreal Grazer. And so without further ado, let's get into the list. I will say, you can just edit this list, however. This is just what list I've been using and what has been working for me. So first up, we've got Incub 4 Incubation Druid and 4 Boreal Grazer. Incubation Druid, you're one of the mana rocks to help us combo. It can get bigger later in the game, so it can make more mana, and it can also ramp us into our combo, even though it is part of the combo, if you know what I'm saying. And a Boreal Grazer, one of the few cards in our deck that don't really interact with the combo, it essentially lets us, uh, so it's a one mana thing that summons a land for free, so it essentially lets us, and it's a zero free, so it blocks early threats, and it summons a land to allow us to combo off on turn three, giving us the extra mana. Next up, we're running four Kinnon and four Paradise Druid. Now, Paradise Druid, it's similar to the, um, Incubation Druid, except it has he it doesn't have that buff ability, but it does have Hexproof when it's untapped, which is really helpful, makes it much harder for the enemy to interact with the combo before you can go off, because even if they interact during the combo, you can just keep infinitely getting the mana. Elysian Karyatid is also in, could be an include in this slot, but it doesn't have the Hexproof, and for it to tap for that 2 mana, we do need a creature with power 4 or greater, which we don't have very many of, and then we're running 4 Kinnon, he is legendary, but it is definitely worth it, he's got that blue in him, so he makes Fade Burrow tap for one more, and he's a 2-2 that says whenever we tap a permanent for mana, we get an extra mana, so this helps us combo off, and he's also a mana sink to win with our combo, we can pay 7 to look at the top 5 and summon permanents out of it, for free so we can essentially once we've got the infinite mana he helps us get to it then we can summon our whole deck Next up, we've got Biomance is Familiar and Leyline of Abundance. So Leyline of Abundance, this is another really solid card. We can begin the game with it in play if it's in our opening hand, which is really good. It makes all our creatures tap for an extra green, which is really good for the combo. And it's also a mana sink. We can pay the 8 to give our creatures 1-1 one, one counters so we can make them infinitely big. Then Biomance is Familiar. You may be saying, why are you running this? Well, first off, it's got blue in it, so it makes Faber Elder tap for one more. But the main reason is it has the ability that says activated abilities of creatures you control cost two less. So our Gauntlets of Light, which is our main combo piece, now only costs one to activate. So suddenly it makes our combo so much easier to get online. We only need the creatures tapping for two mana. So anything, a Faber alone would do it. I'm um, a buffed up incubation. If we have a single ley line on a Paradise Druid or a regular incubation, if we've got. Kinnon does it, Leyline does it, this is just, this is how we combo on turn 3 as well, it's just so insane, Biomance is familiar for the combo. Next up we're running 4 Fae Burrow Elder and 4 Gauntless 
gauntlets of light, sorry. Faber Elder, it's really good. It's essentially a free mana 2-2 two -two with Vigilance that taps for 2, but then if we control a blue permanent, it becomes a 3-3 free -free that taps for 3, and the fact that it taps for 2 or 3 is such an insane combo piece. And then Gauntlets of Light is also extremely solid. Well, it's, it's, not, it's an okay card, but the reason we run it is because we can pay 3 to untap the enchanted creature and go boom, 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 and get infinite mana. You, if you want, you can also run more colours in the deck, just of utility cards, so we can get Fey Burrow much easier to combo with, but uh, in my opinion, this isn't necessary. And then finally, in the main deck, we're running... For Incubation Introjection, however you say that. It's Incubation is the main reason we're running it anyway. It's a one mana. We can either play pay green or blue. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card from among them and put it into your hand. So this lets us dig five deep for one of our combo pieces. And then the other half of it lets us deal with any major threat that's uh, threatening to destroy us and turn it into a free-free. Now we're on to the mana base. In the mana base, I just suggest running, because we don't really want things entering tapped, because that destroys, number one, destroys our potential to combo on turn three. Although we do have a Boreal Grazer, so that summons an extra land on turn one. So not always, but that will often destroy our potential to combo on turn three or even turn four. So I'm just suggesting running four um, Temple, four Hallowed Fountain, and four Breeding Pool, just because they're two life. They're hardly ever. It's, I think there's almost no other deck that can out-aggro this in terms of damage. So the um, life doesn't matter, and then the rest I just fill in with ten basics. You could maybe throw in some fable passages or some of the triomes or triads, but there is no bent triad as well, so it will only be tapping for two of the colours. So re it's really up to you, but that's just my suggestion. Some other viable includes in the deck. I would say Hydro Crisis, you can maybe throw that in. Finale of Devastation and Burn of the Wish Giver. Hydro Crisis, with all our ramp, even if we don't combo, it can become a huge threat, gain us life, draw cards. Finale, and it's also an infinite mana sink. Finale of Devastation, this tutors up for our combo pieces. It is a bit slow though, and can also be used as an infinite mana sink to insta win. And Boon of the Wish Giver, we can later on, it's really good for the combo, drawing four cards, essentially guarantee four cards is almost certainly going to hit a mana sink, and it is cycling to sift through for a combo early on. And also the Elysian, like I said before, if you don't have all of this deck. And then the sideboard. Really, I didn't really fuss with the sideboard, because normally we're not going to be sideboarding in anything anyway, because if we even take out a single card, except for maybe the Incubation or possibly a Boreal Grazer, it suddenly just disrupts and makes it way harder for us to combo. Just throw in anything that's insanely good against decks. And, you guys, that concludes the video. Hope you enjoyed. If you want to see more from me, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And yeah, peace out.